released our a press record for our episode is I was wondering what's Rod's voice going to sound like? <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's uh, one of those things as well for everybody who hires me as a mime artist. They have no idea what I sound like. And they haven't heard me like for years. Yeah. And the first time they heard me, it's like, you, you speak. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, well, that's, that shows a true professional. Like, um, there's a, have you seen a film called The Prestige? No, uh, I haven't. Hugh Jackman. It's a Christopher Nolan film. It's Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale. It's about magicians and the ultimate trick. And yeah. they, watch, they watch this trick where this old, this old uh, um, uh, magician on stage is holding a, fi a fish tank between his legs. It's, it's like a really simple trick. Yeah. The, the real trick is him for the whole time pretending he's like 90 years old before and after All right. the show. So if you watch that, it's, it's a little conversation that Bale and Jackman have about this m magician. It's not yeah. him on stage. It's the real trick. It's everything else. So yeah, 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 uh, yeah. That, that's a great thing I've loved about your, uh, your social media. It's, it's really consistent with what you put out. And yes. It, it's so much fun, man, because, um, and uh, for everyone uh, watching, this is the last episode of the, uh, uh, the Filmmakers Podcast for the Isolation Film Festival. It's a long time coming. Yeah, no, no, it's all good. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm so sorry it's taken so long. I'm pretty patient, so I have no... Like, every time <laughs> I know. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, you know uh, I come back and say, that's cool, man. I, I could, we can do it on uh, that. Yeah. No, you're maybe. you're more patient than I than anyone I know. <laughs> I've got oh, say. really? Yeah, 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 no. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm I mean, super if, grateful if you're busy, for that, yeah. Yeah, if you're busy, that means, you know, you've got someone else. It's like, that's cool, we can do it on another day, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all... It's not even a, a money thing. It's not even I'm busy because I'm getting paid for a job. It's busy yeah. because, you know, when, when you're chomping at the bit an idea or you've got to execute, a, 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 got to, you know, follow through on something, you've really got to, yeah. you've got to take that moment, especially now because it's a fucking night. I'll swear, but it's a fucking nightmare at the moment. So, um, yeah, yeah now you guys that. are back in lockdown, aren't, aren't you? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I work for I'm at work as a photographer and filmmaker for a university, as well as doing everything else. And yeah. um, the students are, are back at their place. The really confusing thing is a lot of businesses are shut down, but obviously supermarkets and places like that are open. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just uh, it's an awful situation because I know a lot of business holders. A small independent business like we all do you know like we've yeah, got our yeah. favorite places to go and have coffee or whatever yeah. um so it's extremely difficult and that's what that's one of the reasons we started the isolation film festival is because of course we were we had my anxiety level like everyone else's was creeping up that first week in march or second week in march yeah so um yeah it was i've got to give you so much credit for for your craft I got real respect for what you do because it was a, a really unique film. It really was. And I've just not had the time to put all the films up online as well separately. So uh, I kind of want to put yours first and foremost because it is so, I'm not going to say different. It is so unique and it has this real positive energy to it. Yeah. Um, and I absolutely applaud you for that because that's what people need. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And I think um, whenever I do the character, which is my original character, Banjo, that sort of um, very childlike thing comes out. Um, yeah. Everything is just very much about some find something new and exciting. So, um, yeah, no, no, I... Um, yeah, no, it was, it was fun making it. When I first, um, when I first heard of the, um, the one in Australia, that yours, I was thinking what is the main thing that everybody's going through right now? I, yeah. I didn't want to make it about me. I, I want to make it a bit more generic. And I used to hear, I used to hear a lot from parents going, oh my God, my, my kid's turning six. And I used to hear, see the little kid, you know, all looking all sad, going, you know, here's my birthday and, you know, I can't even buy my friends. Yeah. So I said, like, that's, that's a good idea. So I slowly started progressing into creating that, um, that little short, silent film, which, um, yeah. yeah. I just, know. I, I don't know. I know how much work goes into something creative. Yeah. But 
there's certain sequences in your film, like I think it's the shot from inside the kitchen with the doors and you taking the uh, taking the towel off and putting it on. I oh I, yeah, I loved it. I think it was brilliant. I, re- I really think we. So I watched it with uh, Vicky, my fiance, and her sister, yeah. and a couple of other people. We watched all the films over two days, and we had a lot of some over a hundred submissions. And for wow. a first festival, we were kind of blown away by that. Uh, yeah. And yours had the most laughs because it had this childlike energy to it, and yeah. especially that sequence for me. I, you know, the you know the montage at the beginning of the event. Yeah, uh, and yeah, there's yeah. a shot of you with the with the um, at the table. I tr- yeah. really tried to work in that shot, that sequence of you, but it didn't quite. Oh, work right. Because I loved it so much, I thought, right, I've got to work it out, and it didn't quite it work. It took out. a while to. <laughs> it took yeah, a while to do it. Yeah. <laughs> if I'd have wedged it in, it would have felt like wedging it in. It wouldn't have felt right. Um, yeah. Wouldn't have, I wouldn't have done your work justice. So. Um, okay. Yeah, it was. How long did it kind of take to shoot? Was it a day? Or was it? It basically took a, um, because what the way it, it was working, it, it was, um, in, you know, when you do something in between scenes yes, and, 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 and you feel this, there needs to be some sort of like, more like a punch, not, more like a, no, not really like a punch, right? But some, but some sort of sequence in between like a, um, like, like imagine when you've got your, your song, you need the bridge in between. Yeah, Something's yeah. going to be uplifting or something new. And yeah. so, because it, it was feeling a bit um, stale in between. So I, I added that. And there was more, more or less like, I'm going to improvise it, see how it goes. But it was working out. So I did it in about, um, I think that took the, the longest. I, I think that took about an hour to do. It took that, about an hour or, or yeah. two, or um, just basically just to work it out properly, because of the lighting and all the stuff, and um, it, it, yeah. it just the the cut and the rhythm. Because I work a lot with rhythm, yeah. Um, because yeah. I already had the music in my head how I was gonna play it out, and uh, so I worked it in 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 the sort of sequence as a rhythm. Um, so I had a, a rhythm in my head how I was gonna cut and everything, and um, and yeah, that basically just worked out. That way, yeah, it worked out that way. Um, have this, I love the music. It had this kind of Parisian vibe to it, this uh, on the streets of Paris kind of thing. You know what I mean? So I, I really, yes, I really dug yeah. the music as well. How long yeah, have no. you? How long have you? Um, have you? Is this the first film you made, or is it something you? No, I used to make a lot of films. Um, if I tell you the, the story, how mm. um, everything came about, um, the filmmaking, my filmmaking, the love of filmmaking came about when I was um, training, because um, I come from my circus background. Okay. Yeah. So it, there was a transition I wanted to do into becoming more of a physical comedic actor. And, um, and at that time I was training in gymnastics. Okay. And... And then I, I met somebody who's doing all these crazy flips everywhere. And I was going, oh my God, that's just, that is just amazing. And it turned out to be a stunt guy. And the stunt okay. guy was currently working for a Jackie Chan film that was being shot in Melbourne. And I, and I thought, dude, how, how do you get into like your stuff? Like his falls, it's all like, I want to learn that. I want to put that into my slapstick comedy. Yeah. I, wanna, I wanna learn how to fall properly. And not hurt myself because I want to continue for the for many years to come. And he said to me, um, I went through new direction stunts and so forth, and I, and I do. So I he got in got in contact with um, with them people, and I started training in. I never became a stuntman. My aim was always to be to be a um, to learn falls to enhance my slapstick skills. And he said to me, the best way to 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 know if you are doing what you're doing right, is to make little films. So when I was in, in my twenties, I put down like, like a little showreel, which is it's on YouTube. If, if you type in Rod Lara stunts, you can see all this old footage that I used to do, like, you know, all this like, you know, crazy yeah. gunfights and fight scenes, which like, you know, but, but, but basically that's how my love of filmmaking came about. 
Um, wow, that's incredible. It's yeah. amazing you can take uh, an element or an aspect of the uh, stunt person to yeah. into what you want to do. I really like that. Yeah, um, and because um, uh, it was especially at that time when um, in, in my twenties when I was like so hungry just to learn everything, just to make myself stand out. Yeah. From um from as a performer, mm -hmm. and um and then from then I stumbled into filmmaking, and um that's how it all it, it all began, with um yeah no it, it was especially just a love for for how. I think what what differentiate between the you know, the theater world and the film they're both good. I, I don't want to be anybody who's watching this saying you know what, what's going on, right? That you don't yeah, like yeah, theater. Yeah. <laughs> but my love it's the how intricate um, filmmaking is. Yeah. Um, you can you can change you know a, a certain shot. You can practically pick the perfect shots, put it all together, and send it out, and it's gonna be living on for for five hundred years or even more. Um, it's like the music from Mozart. He put it out there and it's still living around. It's and, an admiration um, for the craft, isn't it? It's like, it like is. when, when you look at, I, I used to, right, this, this is a little step back, but I used to yeah. collect carry on films, which are rude British comedies from like, yeah, this, I know them. Yeah. You know, and, uh, but it was just after that, I had a kind of an awakening with film when I watched, uh, the Maltese Falcon for the first time with a few friends. I was, we had a few drinks and thought, my friend said, oh, let's put this classic film on. And as soon as I watched something slightly, you know, better, slightly different, I started to love cinema, started to love films across the board, yeah. old, really old, like, in, you know, like uh, Nosferatu to something brand new. But there was something that I didn't quite understand what I liked about behind the scenes or how a film worked. Yes. So like, you know, you end up being a sponge for everything. Like, yep. oh, who's, who's Walter Murch? The guy that did the sound design on Apocalypse Now. I want to know about him. I want to know about this director, this writer, this performer. Mm -hmm. um, so I can, I can absolutely appreciate that because you are, you know, you are a sponge when you're much, when you're younger, it's. Um, mm, exactly. And then you really find what you want to do. And um, I didn't know I was going to make a, a film festival. It was just two okay. of us, myself and Chris Berry, who's the other presenter on the show. Um, we, we just had this uh, chat saying, let's, let's, why don't we send each other short films over, over the break? Because we didn't know how long this fucking thing was mm. going to take, you know. And uh, we said, why don't we, why don't we challenge each other, send each other briefs, we'll do that. And then I said, oh, why don't we just open this up further? Why don't we just open this up worldwide online? And it's a bit of a light bulb moment. I thought, right, there's probably other, other people doing this, but we're going to do it our way. Uh, and then I took the bull by the horns and approached it that way. And I never knew I was going to do that. But I've always yeah. been a good producer of short films, a good producer. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, an, I'm an editor by uh, nature. Uh, okay. and I make my own stuff, but I produce more than anything else. So yes. I think you do, you do find your niche, you know, you do find your, uh, where you're going to focus your energy and, yeah. um, it's, yeah, it's, it's been crazy. And, um, yeah, it's to see, to see we've had films from, we've had, we had quite a few films from Australia actually. And for the okay. newest, the newest festival, uh, Hellbound Horror Festival, that I started, and that's been that's been quite successful as well. Um, we had uh, Alex Proyas, the great, you know, um, he's based in Australia now. He's uh, he directed The Crow and Dark City. He was one of the judges. Um, All right. So we he's good. Yeah, he's he's very good. Yeah, he's but he, he's based in Sydney, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been completely crazy. I didn't know I was going to be this creative over. Uh, being locked down, I thought I'd just be playing FIFA at home on the PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, how did yeah. you? So, yeah, how did you? Um, have you got a real interest in film as well? I do have a real interest in film, and currently, right now, um, thanks to lockdown, probably even last year, I've been transitioning my art into film, um, mm. and I've been getting hired um, more into TV and film, especially TV ads, mainly to showcase what I can do physically as a performer. So this this year is it's been a, a total 
you know, revelation or like a wave of, you know, like a, this transition in my craft. And, uh, and making a short film was, was a kind of a, a new um, thing that I, 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 I did, but I just forgotten how much I love film. Yeah. I'm not really forgotten, but it just, it just grew even more. Yeah. Um, and, um, and people usually ask me, how do I, um, why do I create silent films? You know, like that, that to me comes naturally. I, I, I'm not very good at writing, um, you know, dialogue, but everything comes out visually to me. Yeah. So, um, to me to, to create, I reckon that it will be the same thing is, um, for somebody like Roman Atkinson, who creates Mr. Bean or Jack Tati, who they, they had sound in their times. And even now, um, Roman Atkinson has got sound, yeah. but they, they are just, they, their nature is just to create things visually. They don't want to be, um, they're not trying to, it just, it's just a natural thing that comes out of them. I mean, I admire people like, um, um, like Tarantino. Mm. Who who's so good at dialogue and he can create dialogue for each character and each character sounds different. Yeah. I admire people like that. But to me, everything it's um it's just visually it's like a dance. So yeah. So that's that's, that, that's, that's basically how um That's mm. great. I really admire that because so many it's it's incredible because I, I spoke to um uh, a group of Swedish filmmakers called the um Swedish Ghost Lovers. I would highly okay. recommend looking them on YouTube. They they won an award at our little um, our last festival, and yeah. um, they their group has a unique individual in every position: a producer, and the director, and the writer. And yeah. it's it's a it's a they express themselves in a different type of energy in each of them. Mm. And like there was someone that was as creative as yourself as you, as you in the team, but it, a different. A different vibe they could they could write they could write a really good script and their short film was really well written um, but they yeah. don't have this physicality t- for the direction so she handed off her script to a producer uh, this small production team so you really gotta you know it's it's difficult because you can focus all your energy on one thing but when you come to make a exactly. short film on your own you really have to go right i need to you need to kind of blow off the cobwebs and you know, uh, find hone your skills on so many different things. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, you must, uh, you must have some fans on TikTok as well because I saw some of the videos. And yeah, it just basically just the whole TikTok thing just came about just for the lockdown. Um, I wasn't planning to. I, I mean, I've heard from TikTok and it's a girl, what's the TikTok? All right, that's another thing for you know yeah. to worry about because you know. You always gotta put, you know, stuff on social media, um, and and then I started doing the the banjo um, clips as well. And um, but um, yeah, TikTok is just something that's kind of cool because um, you can create little clips and, and it has to be perfect because it's so it's so it's so visual yeah. that I can use little clips like that and then um, sharing on other social media platforms. But um, yeah, now people have been um, digging my stuff on 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 TikTok. Um, but uh, yeah, it was just basically for a lockdown thing. It might just stop tomorrow, you know. <laughs> but I'm not taking any any any, any seriously. It's just it's just something like a pastime, just to keep myself. It's, um, and it's difficult to continue that amount of en- exert that energy, uh, yeah. creating new ideas and can, like you know, I'm I'm not looking to be a YouTuber or anything like that. But it's yeah. the amount of work they put in, or the the, the sheer numbers of videos they put out. Is, yes. is is mind-boggling it's almost like every day with some of them and yeah i know especially with tiktok um some people yeah. post um the, uh, like 20 tiktoks a day like how, how how like how do you how do you do that like yeah it's because they yeah. you know it's before they go to uni or before they really find what they want to do work-wise you know yeah. it's, it's that it's it's uh yeah it's it's that because they have the time that's it you know it's, yeah you know, you and I would probably be knee deep in that if we were a generation uh, younger. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, it's uh, it's difficult because um, you know you want to put content out, but you don't want it to be like I started putting. I don't know if you saw them in March or so. I was putting film reviews out. 
uh, every yes, lunch, I saw every, that. Yes, every lunchtime, and then I realized yeah, when yeah. I started, <laughs> and it became popular because I was yeah. getting uh, at least a couple of hundred views on Instagram, which is which is really good, and for me it was really good. And then I thought, shit, I've created a, a rod for my own back because I have to be consistent with this now. Yeah, and then I think the last one I put a video up saying I'm not doing anymore because it was yeah, just so, yeah, 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 yeah. Like even my own personal YouTube account, which has got virtually no followers, I was saying, oh, new videos every Thursday and Saturday or Friday and Saturday. I'm like, yeah, I can't commit to that, especially yes. when I started the Isolation Film Festival, because there was so much work. There's so much work involved. Like every day. That's the was, reason why. Yeah. The reason why I, I thought when you when you messaged me was saying you know Rod can you can you make it on another day or this yeah, day? I'm so sorry about that. I, I know how much you're handling. Like you juggling like YouTube channels, you juggling uh, festivals. Then I yeah. see your you've got the horror film festival. You've got the pod, podcast. It's like man, like if I was you know like kudos to like you know like big yeah. kudos to you because you are no, juggling that. so many ideas and. And not, and not just ideas, like the, your, your stuff is so good. What you're putting out in all these different platforms, like YouTube, podcast, yeah. you know, the festivals, it's, they're so good. So you're going to get busy, man. So I knew. So when you, when you used to message me and say, like, Rod, I can't make it. They say, like, that's cool, man. I know you've got yeah. so much on For in the your last, hands. When was the first time I said to you, you're the last person I'm going to interview? Because I promised you ages ago, before the first... Yeah, um, I think it was about two months ago. <laughs> oh, it was, it was longer than that. Months. I think it was longer than that. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, it would have so... been... Uh, yeah, about July. About July, you were saying you're going to interview me. So, four <laughs> five months ago. Yeah. <laughs> it's been oh about that long. It's, it's because the, everything took over with Hellbound because I had four judges that to work with. I had... Um, it was. It didn't become a bigger operation. It was actually smaller. And yeah. f- for both festivals, I'll let you, this is a little behind the scenes, but for both fe- both festivals, I did all the admin, all the emails, all the marketing, everything. I yeah. did myself. And wow. there's a few things that Chris worked on because he was really busy as well. Um, yeah. But I was, I had fatigue after the first festival. I really did. And then yeah. it was... I really want to do a horror one. I don't know why I did it. <laughs> but then, yeah, 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 but then yeah. I, I worked with uh, Joe Alves, who's a production designer on Jaws and uh, Close Encounters. He actually, he was one of the judges. There was Dave Kendall, Ramsey Campbell, who's a huge horror author. And then obviously uh, Alex Breyers. Yeah. So it was, it was getting feedback from filmmakers like yourself. And it was so nice to get your emails and to get all the, it was almost hundreds of emails after the festival finished saying thank you for including us because as you could probably see from uh you watched the the live show didn't you you were made, i think you made yeah, comment. I did, so yeah. nadia nadia and i have been close friends for almost 15 years now and she's based in uh north carolina i'm based in the uk uh, but we've been made friends over twitter and that kind of thing but our key thing was making people feel welcome and give them a, a point of focus you know because i know it's just our first festival but it was, yeah. um, I want like every single person I emailed back, there was, I think there may be two un, um, generic emails I sent to everyone. Um, okay. Every other email was like a one-off to everyone each time. Um, yeah. And it was, it was, some of it was like playing whack-a-mole, you know, trying to, <laughs> try, trying to, trying to keep all these plates spinning. That's what it felt like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I because really I mean, like what you're doing right now, it feels you know, you've ever seen those um, 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 plate spinners? Oh, exactly. You know, yeah, they're, they're, exactly. Spinning, they're, they're spinning. You know, you got your you got one festival, you got your podcast, and, you, and you're trying to make sure the plates are not coming down, you know. So, yeah. you, you kind of and so I can whenever you know, whenever you were emailing me saying, Bro, can you um, can you um. This, this is how my brain works. It's just like I, I, this, I've got a weird brain. Um, when you're emailing me saying, "Rod, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I can't make it. Uh, can, can we do your um, your interview later?" I was imagining you like you know, like I'm I'm like typing and then <laughs> yeah. spinning plates and then typing yeah, yeah, in one yeah. word and spinning. Yeah, 
that's, best, the, that's how the I, best, I was visualizing uh, it. <laughs> the best comparable comparable image is you know Vangelis who did the score for Blade Runner. Yes. If, if you see photos of him, he's got like. 20 keyboards around him in some of his pictures so it felt yeah. like this i'm playing multiple pianos or something it so, is um, yes exactly yeah exactly so that, um, that's that's why i yeah but what, so I, was, I, what I was enjoying sorry what i was enjoying was releasing the episodes each week um but i had to get to a point where i i finished them uh, to a certain degree because obviously the hellbound festival was starting and and obviously with what I learned from isolation to Hellbound was how, what I've got to improve as well as manage my own time. Because you've only got so much time. You, you, know, you know, when you think about an idea or how you're going to perform uh, uh, yeah. at a gig, you've got to, the amount of time you spend thinking is ridiculous. You spend so mm. much time thinking about the idea. Yeah. And... I learned so much on the first festival that went on to the second and things went really well. And it's much smaller because it was horror, but the reach was just as far. We had films from Argentina, Australia, uh, wow. Russia, Canada, US again. We had a few more from the US. Um, and I've learned a few things I need to do next time. And our festival, yeah. I wanted to make it as personal as possible. That's why I was on the videos sometimes, Nadia was and Chris was. Um, yeah. Because we wanted to kind of, kind of connect people, you know? Um, yeah. But I'm, look, I'm really does. looking forward to I really want to. I really want to showcase all of the films. That All of the films will be available, all the submissions. Um, Warts and all. Um, but yeah, I'm going to... What I'm going to do, Rod, is I'm going to show your film uh, as a as a as the leader of the pack so to speak so and sure. so i'm gonna work out how to do it because you've been so patient with me uh, no your film is gonna, your film's yeah, gonna be one of the first <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. i know i love that yeah yeah so uh, but no, I, 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 like I've got, got, so i hadn't yeah i've got so much respect for what you do um thank you and your Likewise. film because it was so different it was yeah, so it was. different and you're so consistent with I don't. I don't like to say your brand, but how you put your videos out, I, I absolutely yeah. love it. Really, really do appreciate it. And um, yeah, no, I just um, um, it, it just um, that's what what I what it is. It's just basically that's that's what comes out of me. And um, yeah, and I'm not gonna be putting out um, something that's just not me. It, just, it will look false or fake. But I, that's what just what I do. And um, I mix dance with mime, and and that's what it is. Yeah, so. And I'm glad people actually like it and uh, I appreciate and I appreciate everybody's art as well because every, everybody brings their own thing to the table and that's and that's what I feel what that's what makes the the world go around you know Absolutely. seeing everybody's um little flavor into the soup which is you know you know yeah so yeah. it's just uh, yeah. it was nice wasn't it it was nice to see the thing I got a little bit of negative feedback and I think I'll look at the camera but I appreciate and understand everyone's uh, slight frustration was not being able to showcase all of the films. Now that's okay. obviously that's extremely difficult because a hundred films that were around three minutes was mm. going to be a massive program. It would have been yes. a massive. So it's the same thing. If we'd have done the horror thing with all the films, it would have been six and a half hours of just films. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm not putting anyone through six and a half hours. You know, I love watching yeah. the Oscars, but it yeah. can get really tiresome. Um, yeah. So, you know, I'm going to probably put, I put call out to all of the filmmakers from the isolation and that um, with, you know, I'm all about, I'll, I'll take the feedback. I'll take the criticism and that because mm -hmm. then it'll inform how I approach uh, next year's, you know, so we're going to be doing it again next year as well. Um, oh nice yeah i'm most likely um i'm planning to start since now we we're coming out of lockdown i'm hoping to get a little more like a crew and and other actors involved into um if you can find into like, another film yeah, exactly if you can find like-minded people that are on the same wavelength as you you mm -hmm. can you can offset you can focus your energy where you want to Exactly. Uh, and that's yeah. that's really important, man, because you can spread yourself too thin. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, like myself setting up the, the cameras and making sure that, you know, 
Exactly. That was and, and, and that's why you talked about the sequence when I, when I, I did the it. sequence of the, it, yeah. of the towel. Um, yeah, it was basically me watching after we go, whoa, uh, yeah, I kind of I screwed up. I, I revealed too much and, and I kind of screwed up. The angle wasn't, wasn't straight on. It was a bit skewered and yeah. So that's, so if, I, if I've got somebody um, to set up the shots and, and somebody for um, sound, yeah. and also I'm going to give a big shout out to when, if he hears this, because I, I promised I was going to, my sound designer, Evan, Evan Kitchener, because um, he he designed all the ding, bong, tch, tch, bong, all the That was brilliant. Seamless, house. seamless, yeah. Yeah. And also he put up with my beatbox for my um, um, music, because um, I, I, I don't write music. And he's got his own studio and he was going to make it professionally. And since it was locked down, I couldn't go to his studio. So he was put up with me with my little recording going, you know, and then explaining to him how that need to be sounding like. And so he created a lot. So um, I want a big shout out to um, my sound designer, Evan. Because well, he well done, Evan. Lot. You did a great job, mate. I'll, uh... He did a good... He's, he's a... He's, um, He's a saint. He's a very patient. I think he's more patient than me. So, yeah. saint. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, sound designers that I know, they really have to be because there's so every facet of filmmaking. There's you've got to have patience in many ways because yeah. there's so much you have to do. Um, yeah. So much you have to do, and uh, I'll, what I'll do is I'll take that little snippet. Um, as you probably saw, that I I do little snippets of interviews. So yeah. I'll I'll put that Evan Evan little credit shout out in the uh, in the pro. No problem, that'll be great. Yeah, because <laughs> so, um, yeah, he actually helped me up a lot because I couldn't go to his studio um, because we had restrictions as well with um with kilometers, so yeah. I couldn't go past that. And plus, you know, me going to another house and we we just get in another house and then another studio, it was just going to be a bit um you know um. Dodgy. Hectic yeah. in, 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 in terms of in the middle of the pandemic lockdown and yeah. we couldn't do it. So we, we were um, basically communicating virtually, um, either by video, phone call or just emails of me sending little uh, sound clips going, <laughs> yeah, so explaining, yeah. explaining that to somebody. And he was very, and he actually would, and then he would ask me, do you like it? And I'll go, oh, the, um, yeah, the, 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 that bass is a bit, you know, low. Can you re raise this? Can you make it a bit faster? He was make, he, he, he was a saint, yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's something, there's an artist called Neil Buchanan in the UK, like legendary TV presenter as well, uh, yeah. in like the late 80s, early 90s. And he had a character, I wouldn't say it was the same, but it was, it had a, I had a real kind of, it, your film took me back to that period of my life. Um, All right. When I, when I was watching his character, he basically, it's a mime, but it, I think he was doing art at the same time. So it was a really Ooh. kind of fascinating, I'll, I'll send you some links actually. Um, that would be great. Yeah. I like to, I always like to learn new, um, I always like to um, find out about new uh, performers or artists who do very similar type yeah. of work. It's great to see how their little, like you'll see subtleties to their art that I yeah. wouldn't as well. Do you know, like little turns oh. or like little subtle nuances. And it, it's, yeah. you know, you've got to learn. That's, that's how you become a filmmaker. That's how you become a performer is you, yeah, look, exactly. at, you look at other examples. And, um, and you always learn from the best as well. You always um, try to learn from the best. So that's, that's what it is. It's all about learning from the best and, and what makes them so good. And um, yeah, absolutely. And and, and it's just it's this trait that you know people who are you know because I admire dancers as well. They're just so focused in their art. They just make it so perfect, and and their their determination to just to make it so good, and it, it makes them stand out from the rest who just go, oh, that'll be right, you know, that will be good. Yeah, that's that's okay. No, 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 it needs to be done perfect. And and this is another two thing that um one of the um, stunt guys said about Jackie Chan. You know how Jackie Chan does crazy fight scenes? Oh, and he hits his elbow 
and and, 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 and in his fights are so intricate and even if he hurts himself he goes no i need to get up he said to the stunt guy this is crazy the stunt guys use what he told them pain is temporary film is forever that's great yeah yeah so exactly. <laughs> that's 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 basically it you know you suffer Put your best your work own, in yeah. film because it's going to be forever going around way past your you know yeah, when you're absolutely. gone, yeah, yeah. no longer, is still roaming around and go, oh, this person did such a good job, you know, um, and it's still there. And so that's basically in my head all the time, you know, when I do something, it needs to be done so well because it, it, it'll be an internet world for forever. forever yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, um, exactly. So how did you get started in, in performing, in, especially this way? Where did that really yeah, start? It's I know really you- funny. Yeah, it's really strange because I mean I was never meant to be a performer. Um, my plan was to be a, an electronic engineer, just like my father is. My father okay. works as an elect- electronic engineer. He's been working for. He'll be retiring this year, but he's be, he's been working thirty years, even longer, forty years as an electronic engineer. And my plan, because I I like that sort of thing as well. You know, I like. That's the reason why I like filmmaking because I like the intricacy, I like the How gadgets, things I like work, you know yeah. things that works. And so, I was I was in um, in high school. I'm not sure how they call it in the UK. Yeah, pretty um, much the same Secondary, thing, yeah. yeah, secondary school. Um, and I was um, there was this class kind of like electronics, so you you can create gadgets and pull things apart and make them work. And you know, so I, I was doing that. And out of the blue, completely out of the blue, I was 13 years old. One of my, um, way before internet, so this shows my age, couldn't, uh, teachers, they had to um, coordinate each student's um, next term subjects by hand. You know, it needs to be done by hand. So Mr. Roberts, you know, bless his, you know, he's no longer, a, you know, uh, rest in peace. He, um, he mucked up my... Um, my subjects. So for some reason or other, he put me in drama. Oh, I, ended wow. up, I ended up in drama. Yeah. Like in, in a drama class, like imagine this like nerdy looking kid. And that's where Banjo came about. I, I used to be this nerdy guy with big glasses and yeah. skinny and move my hands like that. And <laughs> yeah, that's what Banjo comes from. It's me as a teenager, the way Banjo um, acts, wow. just like, kind of like okay. that fumbling kind of idiot. That's how I was um, in high school. So imagine that type of guy rocking up to a um, to a drama class, and I'm going, "What do they do? I- I'm not an actor. I'm never be planning to be an actor." So and and since there was you know that geeky kid, I was like, "I'm not going to skip school. I'm not skipping school. So I'm going to stick around in that class." And I-, I thought you know drama was you know throw the ball around. And um, and just um, you know th- uh, you know play dead or, or things like just games, but I never knew they had to go on stage to perform. And since I was a very shy kid, um, really shy, and at that time, because I'm originally from Chile, so at that time I was in Australia for just not even close to two years. So I was shy petrified of speaking publicly, saying lines, because I was afraid of saying the stupid words and everywhere, everybody was going to laugh. So every single, um, every single line they gave me or every single role they gave me, I did it in mime because I refused to speak on stage. Wow. So, it, it, yeah, so everybody was um, like, let's say if, if they had like a, uh, like a restaurant scene, there'll be the guy, um, the girl, I'm playing the waiter and the guy was like, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then they go, oh, no, no, you know, having a romantic scene. And they used to come in as, 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 as a waiter and I did everything in, in mind because I, I refused to speak publicly because I was wow. afraid how it's going to sound. And my teacher, Miss Barbara, another shout out, because she was the one that honed that the little scene in my, in my um, being, he said, you move so well, you move so well on stage, like a mime. And, and I said, what's a mime? <laughs> what's a mime? So she was the one to first, firstly introduce me. She used to bring to each class, 
a VHS tape, you know, watch this Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, yeah. Jack Dutty, Robin. And back then it was Mr. Bean was huge. So Mr. Bean, all the episodes of Mr. Bean, and even this um one that Ron Atkinson did about physical comedy, he put like a montage of all these like Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, he explained how everything worked. Even that, she put me into that. And they kind of like grew in me. But I, it just never, be, it just became like a hobby. Like, you know, some 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 kids going yeah. to like chess yeah. clubs and things like that. That was me. And then, um, <laughs> yeah. And then the whole, and also I, I studied um, during, when I was about 16 years old, this is how the dancing came about. I was, um, I wanted to be popular with the girls, you know, I wanted to just catch the girls because I was a skinny kid with pimples and big glasses. And I said, like, I want to be, I want to be the hot guy. So I used to see these guys in, um, in, um, in the hall, and they used to, you know, practice break dance and see all these like, you know, crazy things and in and, and the wave and you know, and move around. And all the girls used to be stuck in the go, ah! screaming their heads off. Go, oh, he's so hot! I wanted to be like that. So I, you know, got in. I just approached these guys. Can you teach me some break dance? Um, and then I started, I, I started matching that break dance and mime is so, is so similar cause you know, Absolute, you use yeah, isolation yeah, and all yeah. that. Yeah. So, and then from then on, I basically, I got into dancing and then when I graduated from, from high school, I took a gap year cause I wanted to work and then go to uni, you know, more of a, like an IT engineering yeah. school. But, um, my coach in gymnastics because a friend of mine out of the blue also out of the blue that how the universe works out of the blue he said to me rod would you be able to come down to um would you like to just go to gymnastics man it's like gymnastics what are you talking about i don't want to do gymnastics come man it'll be fun so i started i went there and, and i saw a lot of guys doing flips and things like that and uh, my coach he was a dancer at this uh, dance um, school and I became quite good at, you know, uh, I became quite strong and spotting and things like that at, you know, holding other. And he said to me, um, Circus Oz, this, this other circus in, 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 um, in Australia, yeah. they are looking for performers. And, and I said, you should go and audition. And I said, I'm not going to go audition for them. Anyway, I went to audition for them and I started working for them. For, um, wow. So twice the universe is to me, you're not meant to be this, you know, this engineering sort of dude, um, you know, you, sh you should be doing this performing thing. And, and from then on, for the past 22 years now, I've been um, performing professionally. Yeah. That's incredible. Just completely out of the blue. And that's how I got into performing. I mean, I never went to mum or my parents and say, oh, I want to get into drama school or I want to get into dancing. It just came by mere chance and the yeah. whole mime, it just came naturally. And I felt that mime to me um, was something that's embedded in me. Um, everything, it just, it just, everything came out naturally. And then from then on, I, um, I started getting hired for shows and um, TV ads, TV commercials, and here I am now. And, um, that's great man that's really great. making and films now so, isn't yeah. it amazing isn't it amazing how important key people are in your life exactly you know, like those teachers mm. those break dancers they really though those moments it's so nice to be able to look back and, and remember and thank those people like of the course. teacher you mentioned before the shout out yeah because they do shape shape your lives and I, I value two or three teachers in my past. They didn't necessarily, um, they gave me focus in different ways. They've kind of shaped who I am as well as everyone else, your friends and family. But I had a history teacher, Mrs. Holt, shout out to you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she was, she gave me a real, she helped inform my, what's the, what's the best, best way to describe it? How you can have a passion for something. She was so mm. passionate about history and yeah. especially around uh, early 20th century with the First and Second World War, that kind of thing. And with her enthusiasm, I got enthusiastic about what I did. So it was, these people are so, 
so important. Like I've got a very good friend and without him, Will, I wouldn't, uh, I probably wouldn't be doing filmmaking. I'd be doing something else, play sound or something like that. Um, but it's, it's, it's incredible. Like these teachers and, um, people in, you know, you just need really good people around you need, you know, we, I, I feel like I'm, I'm in a lucky position in terms of my family and friends. I've been lucky with who I've hung around with. Uh, yeah. because they've been a positive influence on me like uh yeah i'll say this my eldest brother in his earlier life around when i was say 97 98 he didn't have the best influence around him now okay. now he's in a much better place he's in a great relationship his his missus is fantastic he's in a good job but when he in his early in his life it really kind of affected him yeah, like a very angry individual you know it, it was just angry at everyone and wow. Uh, because you know it's that's why you know you have that knock-on effect how you were at school it's not necessarily how you performed at school the grades it's how you developed you know development is nurturing someone is so important and you know yeah. people get left behind at schools and it's it's devastating really um, yeah but yeah it's it's amazing to be able to recall people that have influenced your life isn't it yeah no it's uh it's and also um yeah, and you you pointed that out as well. Um, the people who I uh, I this is this is always a thing about you know you att you attract your tribe. You know you always Absolutely. attract the tribe. So the, the people who influence you, you kind of attracted them somehow. And um and, and also you point one thing a really good point there about the people that I um I surrounded myself. They were so passionate. They were so passionate. Like my teacher, she was so passionate about you know. Look at this guy. The way he, the way the way he moves. It's like she was so passionate about you know. Yeah. And also the the guys who were you know taught me dancing. Every any anybody else who I I managed to work in, the passion was so contagious that I just felt that I just needed to just like grab that. and you, and you kind of like naturally just grab that and put into into your system and you Absolutely. go yeah i want i want to i want to i, I want to yeah i, I want to follow that that's you're right you're right you know say with my coach it's like you know no man you, you should definitely go in, into this all, um local audition um so every every person that i met who influenced me into the path that i, I headed towards um yeah, they were so passionate about their art and about the craft. And it's like, you yeah. know, so they basically honed that in me and I went with it. Otherwise, I, I reckon if I continue in, in the electronics, I would have been one of the Mythbusters guy, just blowing <laughs> things up. Yeah, just yeah, working on savage. TV yeah, and, and just yeah. gadgets and blowing things up. Yeah, most likely I, I would have been in some sort of entertainment industry or creating um, um, robots or little uh, yeah. gadgets for films. Most likely, but um, kudos to them for influencing you, me and just yeah, exactly. With you. If you look at um, Adam Savage, one of the MythBusters from the US show, he when you watch his, I think it's called uh, things called uh, Tested, it's on YouTube, and when you watch him, his enthusiasm for what he does, yeah, is is it's really it's amazing how infectious it is. I I was watching, um, I can't remember his character name in Flash Gordon. But uh, Brian Blessed, who played the kind of winged, winged guy with a huge beard, uh, yeah. and he shouts, "Gordon's alive!" You know that's his famous line from the film. I heard him on a British talk show years ago talking about wanting to climb Mount Everest, and yeah, yeah. I, I just watched. I just watched the show because he was on it. I thought, fantastic! I love Brian Blessed. I met met him once. Amazing guy, and. Yeah. After I saw him talking passionately about mountain climbing, I wanted to go and climb a fucking mountain. Yeah. Uh, it's because it's, it, it's an enthusiasm is a huge motivator and it's, it's really interesting. And I've tried to, I tried to cultivate that to a certain degree with um, the Hellbound Festival, especially because I wanted people to feel uh not not wanted but that sounds really cheesy i wanted people to, to feel like they were being listened to and, and mm -hmm. they were they were part of something special and 
I knew my enthusiasm for what I was doing was going to be really important to uh, get more submissions, that kind of thing. And yeah. it, hel it helped get some of the judges as well because I was really passionate. And it, the important thing is when, you, when I was getting these judges, I was informed as well. I knew what I was talking about with yeah. their film history, their career, that kind of thing. Um, and you'll be listened to if you've got enthusiasm, you're passionate about something. People will yeah, listen exactly, and really, yeah. li really listen. You know, they won't just switch off. So, mm. and like I had a, a lecturer thinking about it now. I had a lecturer at University of Manchester, and he was. It was like a, it was one of these modules that wasn't really anything to do with my film production course, but it was about English literature. And the way he was talking about Shakespeare, I was like, it was amazing <laughs> just listening to this guy. You know, yeah. and I was always, always there on time. It was like 200 yeah. people. It was this huge auditorium. <laughs> I was always there. So, yeah, uh, thank, thank, I think Rod and I can say to everyone now, thanks to all those teachers and people that inform you in your life because, you you know, you don't you become – it shapes you who you are. You know, it's it's so important, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, and also in, in high school, I, I it was the first time um, I got into media studies. And then and the, and that was the first time I actually created a little film just for for that subject and it was a silent film it, ju it just came out to be a silent oh, film it was to me and then I realized, this is what i do i create stuff visually i can't write dialogue everybody all the other kids was like you know gangster films you know writing dialogues you know yeah. hey homes you know that but you know kind of like back <laughs> then was kind of like the, the 90s you know yeah yeah, um, yeah yeah and i was just creating this little um little silent film about you know just this guy trying to deliver this um package to somebody and um, and that's when I realized that this is what I do, and this is where uh, where I'm I'm kind of heading towards. But it, it wasn't until um, I graduated from from high school that I I realized this is uh, yeah it's just it, this is what the universe was meant to be, and, and I'm pretty sure that's what happened to you as well. You had a revelation saying, yeah, yeah I feel comfortable with this sort of stuff, and uh, this is who I am, and exactly. um, yeah, and then. Um, in between the, the bridge between being an, uh, a circus performer and a, and a mime artist, I was kind of like, oh, what if, it, what if it fails? I went to film school. So I, I also went to film school and, and studied film. I studied narrative visual effects. Um, so I did that as well. So just and just to learn more about the lingo, uh, the, 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 yeah. um, which has helped me now for TV ads when I, when I've done TV ads as well and making films, um, in terms of, um, directors, especially for TV, they don't, they don't have many, much patience for, um, for actors asking what's a CU, what's, what's a, what's blocking, what's yeah. hitting your mark means, you know, You've really so I learned all exactly, that sort yeah. of, sort of, sort of um, so lingo. and I love it. I love it. I it's, love it. It's yeah. really important to know, you've got to have a grasp of almost every aspect of production to a certain degree because yes. you really need like people and it's, you know, people are on time limit, people are on a budget. They don't have time to mess about with a new actor yes. or a new performer or whoever. So that's, that's a really good reason to, to do that. Um, uh, to be at film schools, to understand how things work, how things really work, you know, yeah. Sometimes it you know it takes years to truly understand how something's put together, and um, like I'll be doing, I'll absolutely be doing both festivals next year, and I'll I've got a few short film ideas that um, that I'm gonna I'm gonna do. I've got I've got an idea, a film about loss, about someone coming to terms with losing a family, and yeah. um, uh, with an actress friend of mine called Kasia. Shout out to Kasha. She's she's amazing. She was in Justice League, you know the um, okay. the huge film. She was in that. She had four she had four lines of dialogue in it, and I think for the new uh, Zack Snyder cut, she's going to get cut out of it. So oh. she, she she's going to be got <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, she she was she's been working as an actress for forever, and I mean like okay since since she could work, she's been doing it for. I've known her almost 20 years now. She's been doing it for wow. at least 20 years. And she's around good our friends. age as well. Yeah, we're, we're very good friends. And yeah. uh, so she, uh, a few years ago, she, uh, she sent a message to me. And we're, you know, every so often, 
And you know, when you value a friend, you really want to keep in contact with them. So we yeah. send each we send each other messages every month or so. And she was sent me a message a few years ago and said, uh, uh, "Look at look out for me in the in the, in the cinema." And I said, "What do you mean?" Uh, you know the biggest film next week, and I said, "Yeah, Justice League, Batman, Superman, all that." Uh, I'm in it. I'm like, "What? Why didn't you ever tell me this before?" And obviously, <laughs> she's got NDAs. It won't, her credits didn't reflect the film, so yeah. I went to see it in IMAX. I thought, right, she's a very good friend of mine. I need to go and see her on the biggest screen possible. Yeah. And then she had four lines of dialogue in a huge movie, and I was yeah. like, I was so so impressed, and uh, and then. Since she got that that part, her agent changed. She got more roles. She got offered more. She got offered uh, small parts in big films and big parts in smaller films. So she was getting offered more and more stuff. So it's amazing how one thing can get can spiral. Like you know, you you know mm. when you when you get an advert, it's like the positive yeah. experience with someone. They'll remember you if you if you work with them well. Um, even if yes. the subject matter of the next one doesn't suit you, they'll remember you more than yeah. some generic actor, you know? So you've got to make an impression without embarrassing yourself. Yeah. And also, um, and also it's not just that, like everybody who, um, who I've actually worked with, uh, and I even got an experience, they, they see how you treat others. If you're Absolutely. a nice person and you treat other with respect and you're not a diva, um, yeah, you are going to be, um, cause I remember, um, this second AD when I, uh, years ago, I worked in this, in this, um, um, TV ad for all the Paso. And my, my, basically my, my role was to play like a Mexican uncle throwing forks into, um, into, uh, you know, like a, like a bullseye so i was throwing yeah, forks and uh, that's the ad yeah. like yeah and that was basically um that was basically the ad the, the comedic turnaround that we had so many forks we didn't know what to do about with them and then they bring on um, this new um rice thing for all the past so we were all using the forks to eat rice anyway on that on that um i was called in at 7 a.m um for the ad and then um and then I didn't do my scene until 3 p.m. So I That's spent typical, all it, day yeah. just hanging around, you know, you feel that you just hang around. And there were, and there used to be this guy, the second AD, Adrian, he was a ninja, literally. He's like, would you like some green tea? Sure, I'll, I'll have some green tea. Because I was just drinking so much green tea. Um, would you like some green tea? Sure. Dude, that was quick, you know? So when I finished the actual um, shoot, um, I... No, he wasn't a second AD, sorry. He was a runner. And then okay. this, the second AD thing comes later. He was a runner. He was just a, a runner guy. And he was just basically giving food to everybody. And, and, never, and nobody, he never missed anybody. And when I finished that thing, I, I thanked him. He's like, dude, you worked harder than everybody else here, I felt. Because he was just running around. And he was always running around. And then I did a, a, another ad for Carlton Cole. And I, I saw Adrian. It's like, dude, wh what do you bring here? And and he was the second AD. And, and the he same said, guy. Uh, same guy. He That's years incredible. later, he became the second AD. And he said, I saw your audition tape. He was with the director, second AD. He said he was everybody. I said I, I saw your audition tape. So imagine if I was a complete. It's like that, exactly. I'm not a guy. Exactly. Yeah. And, and he was being a complete. You know to everybody, uh, best not to get him. So yeah, like, I mean, that the, the film industry story, yeah. is so small. And I think it, it goes to saying to your friend um, as well, who appeared in the film, Yeah, she not only has a talent, she also is, he makes a good impression on everybody. It's like, I like to work with her and spend 14 hours a day with this person, you know, just yeah. to, um, cause the long shoots, so it's all about also how you treat others and how you connect with others and how you communicate with others. Absolutely. And because um, I mean, um, you don't want to be stuck with somebody who's just going to be make your your day hell, you know. So I'll, uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a, a funny, a funny story. It's not as, not as good as that, but um, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, in I think it was the end of end of the second year of university. So this was like oh seven something like that. I always get the date slightly, just slightly out, but it's, I think it's 2007. 
uh, a friend of mine at university, her, a friend of her family worked in a TV production company called uh, Irish Dreamtime, which is owned by Piers Brosnan. And it produced, oh, wow. it co-produced uh, um, Thomas Crown Affair and some of his smaller movies uh, in the late 90s and 2000s and that. And uh, he said, oh, I need runners uh, for production in London. And Katie, who was the friend at university, uh, she she went down to that and I said, oh, that's that's amazing. She came back after a month saying, oh, they're looking for someone else. Would you be interested? I said, yeah, I'll do that. And I was yeah. at, I was at an age because I was I went to university slightly later than as people that could go earlier. Uh, yeah. And I thought, yeah, I'll do it. Um, my head's in the right place in terms of maturity and all of that and how in, how how the world works. Yeah. I know it's going to be for nothing. There's going to be no cash. Um, but I thought this is going to be a, uh, a couple of weeks of work, and then yeah. I'll come back and it'll be a good experience. So when I went to work on it, I didn't realise the runner the position I was in was the post-production that was doing running work for the director, the editor, the co-editor, the screenwriter, mm. and the huge producer that came over from the U S and I'll tell you about that in a sec. And I was like, Oh shit, this is, this is, this is quite a big deal. It's a, it's a $30 million film. It had Gerard Butler, Maria Bello and wow. his Brosnan, but it was the post-production. It wasn't during production. So you didn't yeah. see the stars, but um, got to meet some incredible people. And, um, one of the first things, Heidi Freeman, shout out to Heidi. She's, she's wonderful. She was the assistant editor. Uh, she's worked on um, Handmaid's Tale, that kind of thing. And so did the director of the film. Um, and she said to me, um, we, because there was, there's some things, there was quite a lot of things to do in a short period of time. And then there was periods where there's nothing to do. So she yeah. said, um, uh, watch the film through, see what you think. And we'll chat about the film. And, and throughout the period of actually the post-production I worked on, they gave you a scene just to practice your editing on. So I was editing a, a huge feature film as a test. And it was, it was, a, it was, it was like a dream, you know, an absolute dream. And I got great memories from that. So I watched the whole film, uh, apart from say the last 20 minutes. And I thought, yeah, it was pretty yeah. good. And I'm, <laughs> I can, I can be too honest. If you play poker against me, you'll be able to yeah. read me in a heartbeat and you'll know what cards I have. That's how, yeah. you know, I, I live, I, uh, I have my heart on my sleeve. You know what I mean? You, you really get the mm -hmm. honest mates. There's no facade. There's no point. Life's too short. Yeah. And uh, I saw this guy with his cravat and suit sitting down in the editor's chair. The director and the editor were off for lunch. This guy w was wandering around. I was like, who's this guy? I don't know this guy. And um, he was like, oh, where's, uh, where's Mike? Where's Mike? He had this really posh English accent. Yeah. Where's Mike? Where's... He was very lovey, you know, the kind of in crowd, in a mm. circle. Uh, I, I'm not too sure where Mike is. Would you like to take a seat? And he, he's gone for about half an hour, so he's bound to be back in the next 20 minutes or so. Oh, yeah, no problem. Okay. I said, would you like a cup of tea or something? Yeah, I have a cup of tea. I says, oh, have you, have you seen the films? Oh, um, yeah, I saw, uh, you mean Butterfly on a Wheel? It was called Shattered in the US and Butterfly on a Wheel in the UK. Okay. Uh, only small film. And uh, he said, what did you think of it? I said, oh, yeah, it was, yeah, it was pretty good. And yeah. he, he read my face and what, what do you mean pretty good? I was like, oh shit. <laughs> what, have I just, what have I just said now? What have I just said? Yeah. I said, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Just yeah. sweating. <laughs> and then Heidi came in. I was like, oh my God, I feel like a right dickhead. He gave me a look. He was talking to her. And then he gave me a look. And I was yeah. like, oh my God, I'm going to get sacked. Even though I wasn't getting paid, I was going to get sent home. That was in London. All the post-production was in Goldcrest, which has done post-production on giant movies you know and um uh i uh <laughs> and then i think it was a couple of days later i was like fucking hell that was awful and then i saw him every so often he gave me glances i was so pissed off so heidi said oh, did you watch finish watching the film I said no no i need to oh you need to watch the end of the film so i watched the whole film again and the last 20 yeah. minutes and the last 20 minutes the twist there's a big twist at the end really elevated the film. I was like, oh shit, this is actually really good. So yeah. I was like, oh balls. That's why he was so put out by what I said, because it was really good in the end. And mm. I, as soon as I, I can't remember the screenwriter's name, it was his first feature film as well. And he was the screenwriter of the movie. And Heidi, ah, after right. that, when Heidi came back and he gave me that look, she saw yeah. me a little bit later and said, oh, you know that, uh, I can't remember his name now. 
that's the screenwriter of the film. It's his first film. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, fuck. No yeah. wonder you said, you know, yeah, pretty good. 30, what do you mean pretty good? Yeah. It was, 30, <laughs> it, was a, it was a $30 million film and it was like... Yeah. Uh, Icon Films were co-producing it, Mel Gibson's production company and yeah. Pierce oh, Brosnan's right. company. Yeah. So it was, a big, it was a big small deal. So I watched yeah. the film again. I saw the screenwriter. I saw... Uh, Let's call him. Let's call him um, Jack. Oh, Jack! I yeah. loved the film. The ending was great. And he said, "Bullshit, bullshit." And then he bur- <laughs> and then he and then he and then he burst out laughing, and we had this kind of kind of release of energy, and it was yeah. it was super positive. It yeah. was a really positive experience. We laughed about it, and then we had this really strong bond between us. Good. So it was, and that experience was amazing. Like I met. I met Robert Davy, who's um, a Davy, he's co-founded Icon Films with Mel Gibson. So I met some really big people, and they wanted me to work on that for the rest of the four-month period, but I couldn't. I had to go back to university, and that was oh, really? That was the biggest regret yeah. I ever had. I ever had. Every so often, I have a little thought about it. Whenever I see a Bond film with Pierce Brosnan in, yeah, I have this little thought, you know. So yeah, it's uh, sorry that was a long-winded story, but no, 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 like, like I. I I get it. You're also talking about it because I, I went to film school. I was in my mid-20s when I went to yeah. film school. So I, I really kind of knew where I was heading. And, um, and well, that, same with that, you, you that know. Runner, that runner was key. That If you hadn't been a really nice guy and been genuine, yeah, you, you wouldn't have got that other gig. You know, he would have said, nah, don't bother with it. Most, yeah, most likely. Because he, he even said, I, I saw you. Because um, if, um, if you type in Rod Lara, Captain Cold, you can see I played a Yeti. So, and, um, so my, my, and I, I, and I got hired because of my mind skills, my physicality, you know, so I had to be very ape-like and, you know, when you, when you move, you gotta be, everything's just bigger than usual. It's like you, when you move your, your body. So, so I literally had to emulate that in the audition, in the audition process. And Adrian, he saw that and he said, I saw your audition tape. And I went, oh, cool. So imagine if I was a complete, you know. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. That's something I want to person. ask. Exactly. That's yeah. something I want to ask you about, actually. Um, what's your kind of regime for keeping flexible and fit? Because you've really got to be, you know, you can't, yes. be, oh, you can't be creaky. You can't have, oh, I don't feel, you know, I've got a bad back. Yeah. The best, I mean, if, you, if whoever wants to learn, um, Whoever wants to, because um, I go, I mean, I do my, my daily routine at the gym, now they open, um, which is mainly just the body fluid, because I mean, everything is, I'm not about be- becoming a bodybuilder, it's all about keeping your your, your core, which is your yeah. body, strong, because you're going to make leaps and, and, and bounce, Twist and, and you're going to be light. But the best training that I've actually had um, is dancing actually oh, wow, yeah. the the link between um, mime and dance is it's so, so close. intertwined. It's, it's pretty much the same thing, isn't it? It's like so close to each other. It yeah. is. It is. So e- every single thing that you do in terms of um, stretching, you got to stretch. It's all dance, and even when you um, and even when you when you practicing moves or certain things, it all comes from dance. So. Um, so practicing certain sequences with music in in a dance sort of way, you know, you just gotta make yourself you you automatically your body becomes flexible, and it, it's funny because I mean um, now that I'm getting older, I think about things a bit more than before. Um, before I used to be just more of you know how I, 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 I can make a, a leap and but you now I'm thinking out, about you know more, yeah. I, I, um, how can I make this and I'm not going to be twisting my ankle things things like that but your muscle memory it sticks around and and the regime that you keep up your body naturally uh, stays limber and yeah. that's what's all all about become um, staying limber um, I've seen that with a lot of um dancers and performers in the uk i can't name names yeah. that there's a few that are really famous in the uk they're also performers and uh, in terms of presenting that kind of thing and they're much much older they're like 60s 70s and they're like fred astaire you know they're they they remember like there's a sequence at 
I think it was the Oscars. I don't know the year, but it's Fred Astaire. Did you see that sequence with Fred Astaire? I think it's Fred. I think it's Fred Astaire, where he never won an Oscar, but it was with Bob Hope, and Bob Hope presented it. And yes, he just goes when Bob Hope said, "Are you retiring?" And then he said, "Like, no, oh, yeah, I am." And then he started pressing into like dancing. That's, a dance that's an incredible thing to be. Yeah. That look at that guy. That's you know you don't have to be an old guy that's just stuck with a stoop, you know? Exactly. If you're, if you're disciplined, like I need to be more in terms of weight and not sitting down at a fucking table all the time. Mm. But it's, that's really something to admire and to focus because, you know, he, his energy and like you, the energy you have, it'll keep you in really good stead for your entire future, you know? It does. Um, so yeah. Because, um, and also because this sort of work as well, is so physically demanding yeah. that if you don't keep it, your stamina, you can be hard for something and you're going to be gone. Like in five minutes, you're going to be going, broken, yeah. I'm puffed out. I can't go out anymore. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, it's just basically you got to keep um, your, your stamina and you naturally do. If you, if you practice your, um, what you do. And also what I, I should explain to when I do my workshops and my mind workshops, if you, if you see people like, you know, Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, Groucho Marx, even Marcel Marceau, they're all brilliant dancers. They were naturally, like, in yeah. real life, they were, like, beautiful dancers. That's and that's, so true. And that's basically yeah. what, what brings that in you. It brings a dancer in you because they're so intertwined. So, that's um, so true. I didn't realize. You make a really good point. I, I love the Marx Brothers. I haven't watched yes. one of their films for years. I think it's Day of the Races. Uh, there's, I'll, I'll talk about Groucho in just a second. There's Day of the Races where there's a police officer after them, or it might be a night of the opera, where they use beds as doors. And oh, yes. A, oh, my God. It's such an amazing like achievement. And that's what I like about your film is those, that little moment. If, you, if someone else had filmed that, they might have used different camera angles for that sequence. And it wouldn't mm -hmm. have worked as well because people would have said, oh, yeah, right, multiple takes, whatever, or multiple cuts. Yeah. But that one sequence showed your skill, you see. It was kind of a, mm -hmm. a good calling card for what you do. And Groucho, yeah. when I saw Groucho in a lot of those early films, um, he, was, he, he danced around. There's little moments where he showed what he could really do. He, yeah. And it was like, wow, it's like it's just completely fluid and it's, it's something to marvel. And... Uh, and that's yeah. why that's why we really enjoyed your film, and oh, it, thank you. it brought it brought my family a lot of smiles when we watched your film. It was really great. Oh, good. That's that's my aim with um, yeah. especially when I when I bring you know the banjo character, which I, I always tell everybody that I based it in myself as a teenager. That everything is so, yeah. you know, it's just everything so new. Like I want I want to try that out. Yeah, I'll try that out. It doesn't work. Oh my god! But you know, I'll, I'll give it another try. Yeah, so I want to bring that. Exactly, Childlike. yeah. It worked. It worked really well. How did you do the um, the little whispering voices from around the apartment outside? Oh, was... that was Evan. Evan, e e e um, Evan did that. In um, he got um a few people just to create um to uh, put voices into. So he created a, the little um sequence of the yeah. the voices. So that's he a nice really... shout out to um Evan, Evan to uh, job, for yeah. the sound design in that. Yeah. He did, and, uh, and when and when I came, because I mean, at the beginning it sounded like echoey, kind of ghostly, and and, and then Ben is like sitting at the table going, "What's that?" And then he realizes, then he when he, he steps out into the window at the end of the film, you can actually see that all his neighbors from below everywhere wishing him happy birthday in in a very sort of you know um, lockdown amicable sort of you know yeah. way. But um, yeah, it was um, all thanks to Evan who had that idea that it should be brought up not straight away um, sounding like voices. It should sound like ghosts, you know, like little ghosts, yeah. you know. Are they in, the, in his head? But no, they're actually his neighbor saying, happy birthday to Banjo, yeah. Yeah, it was it was very clever, very clever short film. And I, um, I really hope we, uh, we all get to see more as well. Um, oh, you're definitely going to be seeing. I was thinking yeah, that... Got, you could almost switch. You could almost have. You could almost switch it up in many ways. You could have a mime character, but then almost have something outside of the mime, where it's more of a drama. 
with you as a as an actor. So yeah, there's, there's there's tons of opportunity, you know. Oh, the, millions. Yeah, yeah, there's millions of opportunities that, and um and ideas that I, that I have. Um, yeah, that um I, I've got funny now that I we be coming out. I, I can bring like a, a crew and we can start working on that. And um yeah, yeah, because I'm I'm um um I've got m- many more projects coming up. Yeah, that yeah, um yeah, I would really like help. to be um to be um, bringing forth into film festivals. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think people will really appreciate the um, originality you have as well. I think that's, that's what's the most attractive thing about your film is how original it was compared to other people. Oh, thank you. I've got to say across the board, it was really a pleasure to see all of the films and, yeah. and it was, it was just a different energy. That's what I really liked mm-hmm. about it. And, and it was the innocence of the character. I think that yeah. was that was like like what you said about their voices in, in his head. They could have been, yeah. you know. So it's nice to be able to have in the writing of the film and with those voices, it could still be in his head. But and yeah. it's it, people all talk about that past its point, past the end of it, you know. So um, yeah. Rod, Rod, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Likewise, this has been really great fun, mate. And um, Please let us know of anything you have in the future. I know it's, oh, definitely. it's tricky to put content out at the moment, but uh, uh, we're more than happy. I'm more than happy to post new films or stills. And um, this will probably go up next Friday. Obviously, there's other sure. bits and bobs, but um, I'm sure it'll go up next Friday because I can edit this on Monday. I'm not yeah. really going to cut anything out anyway. But it's just uh, I want to. You can it. if if I'm mumbling too much and I'm going. Um, That's usually um, you know, me. You can usually me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Usually yeah. you can hear my Tony Soprano heavy breathing. You know. So. Oh right. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, but, uh, this has been great, mate. And thank you so much. You've been uh, a standout guy, and you've been extremely patient as well. Likewise, you. You are. You know. You. you I, I, I. And all your stuff, man. Like I said, I was so patient because I knew you were. You know spinning so many so many plates at once and but all your content what you're coming up with is just brilliant man i've got i really appreciate admiration it, for you i've got huge admiration for you uh, i really really do appreciate so i feel it. i feel really honored to it's be mutual, um, interviewed man. It's by mutual. you it's mu- well thank that's, you <laughs> that's very kind, and yeah. have a think about obviously we've got isolation film festival next year uh if you yes can, if you can submit something for that that'd be amazing and i will think about a horror a kind of a mime character but with horror that would be incredible for hellbound next year so yeah that'd be really I've actually got, uh, yeah i've actually got something like a very david lynchy type of thing it could be so um, sinister as well <laughs> yeah 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 no i know that's that's what it is yeah it, it's got this like sinister 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 yeah. twist but it's in the uh, in the absurd as well so yeah it can really work Love that, mate. well uh oh uh, one last thing I, sure. This is more to Australia as a whole. Um, I loved so that there's so much about me that I have from Australian culture, especially kids shows back in the 90s, oh, yeah. like, like Heartbreak High and Pugwall Summer. Oh. Just, <laughs> yes. Honestly, there's so, I, I know I know it's odd to, you know, every Australian I speak to, oh, have you seen this? You know, it's whatever. And um, yeah. but it, it's it's informed me like Pogwall Summer. I end up singing some of the songs or saying some of the lines. I know it sounds ridiculous. Yeah. Like twenty five years later, um, but yeah, it's uh, um, Australia's got such great strong um, uh, content content makers and creatives. It's fantastic. Like the Australian films and and submissions we had for the Isolation Film Festival were were fantastic, really. And we received a music video. Uh, called Hollywood wow. Dead uh, for the Hellbound Festival. Yeah, uh, and it was. Um, I'll send you a link to that as well. It's it's brilliant. Yeah, no, let's see it. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Rod. It's this has been absolutely no pleasure. worries. Likewise, and uh, I'll let you, I'll send you the sc- the uh, screenshots. If you've got a headshot, by the way, a preferred photo of you, can you send that over to me on the email? Yeah, no worries. I'll send to you now. I've got like a proper headshot the poor actors right. and all the stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, because that'll go on the uh, YouTube thumbnail and everything as well. Perfect. Yeah, top man. Have a good day, mate. You too, man. Have a good yeah, one. Bye-bye. <laughs> See ya. Bye.